Hello dear chess friends and uh, welcome to our new video. In that game, in that video I will present uh, domination Smyslov uh, shown in his game against Arnold Denker. That's a match of nations, Soviet Union versus United States, uh, held in Moscow 1946. Well, game is very important, very instructive to understand the concept of playing uh, of controlling uh, light squares in opponent camp and weak squares and to play against opponent uh, against uh, opponents hanging pawn center you'll see how two pawns black hat on central files were just uh, perfectly blocked and uh, became object for white's attack uh, game was started with e4 and black played c5 Looks like black is ready to play sharp Sicilian defense, but Smyslov denies that by playing patiently knight c3. So, uh, position is, uh, that opening is known as uh, so-called close Sicilian because white wants to organize a patient uh, uh, finishing development with chances to attack on the king side looks like white is ready to go for some reversed king indian setup uh after knight f3 or with or without f4 or maybe in more common way to play knight to e2 black here played knight d4 and that is i think not so good uh with white knight still on g1 because white it is better to wait for move something like knight g e2 and then to play knight d4 then white won't be able to capture but after knight d4 white has interesting solution knight c e2 offering pawn let's see why after knight e2 after black takes knight e2 knight takes bishop d2 bishop b2 rook b1 if bishop uh, if black plays this that would be fatal for black of course because black will lose material uh, and uh, if bishop goes back, uh, white will just take that pawn c5 and uh, will have excellent, excellent play. That's much better for white. He has four activated pieces against only one activated piece for black side. Black has a problem with pressure on that diagonal a3, f8. And black has problem with pressure on that b file on square b7. Also that bishop can be joined to attack. Uh, black decided of course not to take and he played d6 but now of course c3 forcing black to capture if black takes of course some square would be gained by white and that is okay for black but we must say that white is still better here because he has control of the center and some space advantage after c3 knight c6 we can see that black did bad job knight d4 losing time white knight a wasted time but knight is not on the same place so white can go for d4 immediately uh, white had that recapturing on mine when he was playing his seventh move a move knight c e2 the point is now white is ready to put pressure on d file on black pawn d6 so why is that dangerous for black evidently you know about uh, so-called dragon Sicilian where black has that pawns on d6 and g6 you also know about shevening in Sicilian where black has pawns on d6 and d6 in dragon black bishop belongs on g7 it is placed here now but in shevening and after d6 and d6 moves bishop belongs on e7 now we can see black has both d6 e6 and g6 so that means practically black bishop um, is extremely needed on both locations on g7 to cover that squares weak squares f6 and h6 and it is also needed on e7 to protect that weak pawn on d6 and that's why d6 e6 and g6 setup is bad if white has open d file simply pawn d6 is in problem now knight d4 bishop d4 and uh, black played e5 if black plays knight f6 that looks better for better option for black but that is still better for white white can go for this he wants to use a dangerous bishop on g2 better uh ma majority three versus two is better than four against three uh, there is pin he will 
White would be able very soon to exchange dark square bishop. Black in some moment must move that knight from f6. And that was uh, pretty better for white, but okay. Black decided to play e5, and I think that is lesser evil uh, for black to play still knight f6. e5 makes big hole on d5 and makes pawn e5 extremely weak. I will just remind you black bishop is on wrong spot on g7. Now it is closed. Knight e7, knight does not belong there. Black hopes he will play d5, but after that move and casting, we see that black cannot play at all uh, d5. Here, I would maybe suggest move c4 with idea to go for knight c3, but okay. White wanted firsty, firstly to finish development. Bishop e6, queen d2, and d5 is bad because white has move bishop c5. If black captures, peace is gone, knight e7 is lost. If black doesn't capture, white will capture on e7 and take on d5, will extra pawn. That is bad for black. And after queen c7, we can see that white has idea to play c4, uh, c4 and he played that rook. Of course, that rook because pawn on a2 needs protection. f5. Uh, I would suggest here rather b5, but problem for black is white has a4. Now white a4 pawn is used to crush black b pawn and after eliminating black pawn from b5 I would be able to play c4 and knight c3 again. If black plays a6 okay pawn on b5 remains weak and black will have problems with it. Uh, that would be still lesser evil I think than f5 but after f5 black wanted he hoped to eliminate pawn e4 somehow, and after that to play d5. White's reaction is perfect. He just plays c4, neglecting any capture. So after this, uh, black will take, of course, probably with pawn. Yes, with pawn. And he would be able to play d5 with having reaching uh, a dangerous pawn armada in center that will bring him some initiative. White played c4. Idea is simple. Knight c3 to control square d4, d5. After taking, of course, knight c3. Black must not take because after that, uh, knight e4 and white threats b3, which cannot be prevented. Black is in uh, ruins, of course. After knight f5, white just takes with knight allowing black to take that pawn and we can see it may look black did good job because he has bishop pair alas bishop pair is here a uh, main defect for black because bishop g7 isn't working that pawn isn't working at all he tried with h6 to prevent that move knight there but white just retreats to d file attacking pawn on d6 Capturing with queen is not good because there is knight d6 and black is in problem. White can also take even with a rook. No problem. Taking with bishop would lead to collapse because after rook ac1, black cannot prevent b3 with winning material. So rook fd8 was played and finally rook ac1, rook c8, b3, b6. I don't know why that move. Maybe black was afraid of c5. Of course, that is illusion, but I don't know, maybe black wanted just prophylactically to remove that pawn from that diagonal to avoid attack from bishop on g2, but after b6, knight c3. Of course, that two squares are under white control and black is just hopeless. After queen e7, we can see key move in that game, that is move bishop d5. Of course, if opponent has two bishops and if one bishop is good, most probably another one would be bad. Black bishop e6 perfectly fits with pawns d6 e5 and bishop g6 g7 is so restricted by his own pawns. After eliminating light square bishop, white will dominate on squares e4 and d5. Probably rook will go to d5 and knight to e4 with direct attack on d6 and that pawn will fall soon without any doubt. Uh, after bishop d5 I will remind you about very important principles. If you find such key squares like in that position e4 and uh, d5 are, 
eliminate all open and pieces controlling key squares. Doesn't matter if you will uh, exchange your piece controlling that squares for his piece. That is very important. After eliminating black bishop on e6, white will firmly establish blockade here and dominate. As you can see, why not rook d5? There is nothing wrong, but okay. And now knight e4. Black must switch to defending that pawn. White improves. There is threat in some moment of playing b4 and c5. And also of tripling. Rook d3. Idea is to triple. But black decided to give away that pawn. If he tries something else like queen e6, there is this. And after protecting, there is c5. Black is lost because after b takes, you can see pin on d5 will end the game. White is exchanged up and easily wins. So black decided to suck that pawn, but that is just for nothing. Because there is nothing on f file black can achieve. White precisely play this, perfectly calculated that rook f2 will give nothing to black. Black must go for this, okay, he's two pawns down. Now closing the check, taking, taking, and of course rook d8. Black does not even one single check. He must play rook g7 and now game is over. Black is without check, he must play g5 and white just chases for black king. <coughs> Queen h6, another pawn is taken. Still black is out of any check. And now prophylaxis, rook f1 is threatening. Again, there is no check, just see how Smyslov perfectly observed the position. And after that, black just play some more moves, few more moves by inertia. Here rook f2, preventing on some check on e2. And after that moves, as you can see, black decided to resign. There is no defend for black, he is in Zugzwang. And uh, he will soon lose some material. Uh, white can win even after trading queens. Black is just lost. I think there is no defend against maneuver something like this with rook e8, for instance. Two extra pawns. I just want once again to pay attention of black careless play. He took on d4, opening d file. That start of his problems. <coughs> that just generated his problems in the middle game then f5 he stayed with holes on e4 and d5 and of course after exchanging that light square bishop with bishop d5 black is absolutely hopeless there is no chance for him uh to show uh any resistance there is no there is zero chance for black to organize anything and white convincingly just wins the game by uh, setting rooks together with queen also on d file and knight on e4 pawn d6 will fall i hope you could enjoy that performance i hope you can enjoy that game and i learned i hope you learned thing or two things uh see you soon with new examples and once again thanks to you supporting our channel See you soon and bye-bye. Uh,